Oh, well, this one should be easy. Check the clock. It's good, good morning, Your Honor. We're still in the morning. <laughs> yes, we are. I, I believe that Miss Bauer and I have reached an agreement. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You reached an agreement? Yes. Isn't that amazing? You too? <laughs> shocked. Shocked I am. But go ahead. Let's see. What are we going to do? Well, I, the escrow was not paid, but that's because they claim there's no money. All right. There's a couple things that are preliminary to this. There's an unregistered vehicle on the property that's being ticketed by the city. My client paid the $50 ticket. It comes on a weekly basis now, and they have agreed to move the vehicle into the garage, all right? So that it is the, it's their vehicle. Okay. And the $50, and I'm stating the $50 fine that my client paid would be deducted from the security deposit. Okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. I want to take care of those preliminary ones. So they're going to move the car. By the end $50 of the dollars that he paid, it's going to come out of the security. That's correct. Okay. That's reach that. So we're done? No. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> tenant, you guys had to resolve it. Okay, wait, no, go wait, ahead. But the tenant, it, you know, will move out hopefully by the end of February, but it might take till the middle of March, and we understand that. Allegedly, Mishta will not pay for March, and we will see where that comes. But meanwhile, according to so Ms. the Powell, defendant's moving, she's going to try to get out by February 29th. But if not, it's going to be March 15th or mid. Yeah. And if I can just fill the court in on why that's the timing. I've been asking for a move packet for Ms. Green since December, very diligently. We didn't get it till last Thursday. So she already has contacted um, several landlords and connected with a, a program to help her locate a new house. So she's going to move the process along as quickly as possible. The problem is going to be CMA doing their part quickly. So that's why we're um, we're yeah. saying we'll try, but okay. That but they also recalculated her rent back to. Her portion is zero for January and February. That's why she didn't pay the escrow order because she doesn't have any income and Mish is going to cover those months at 100%. January and February. In November, I was about to get to it, but you interrupted. Oh, right. She what answered did... my question. She didn't yeah. interrupt. She... Okay. All right. That's, Ms. that's how Barbara. The whole thing. So she tries to be really. Like Mr. Nice Guy. Holis holistic. Yes. Okay. So I got that part. What's the next part? November and December, according to Ms. Bauer, will be paid by the rental assistance brighter way. Okay. So, so you're on this is CMA we're dealing with, right? That we're dealing with CMA. Ms. Green has been connected with a program called Brighter Way. Okay. She got a verbal confirmation yesterday that they would they would pay November what she owes for November and December. I called this morning. I wasn't able to speak with the person that she's working with directly. I spoke to someone else in the program who said, well, if if that's what that person said, then that's what's going to happen. But she also has a hawk appointment on February 29th. Um, but but as far as I know, as we sit here today. She's going to get rental assistance through this program for November and December. Okay. Which is approximately so now this is this is what is about approximately what? It's she owes approximately fifteen hundred for November and December combined. So is that so that's her portion yes. of what wasn't paid? Did plaintiff get then plaintiff got the section eight portion for November, December. That is correct. Okay. So it's that other part. Yes. Got it. Okay. And then so that's for November, December, about fifteen hundred dollars. Then for January and February, she's at zero and section eight should be paying that entire amount to the land. Yeah, or whatever her portion was okay because i think the landlord's already received his 
Probably. Oh, they re- you're right. You he would have already received that portion of Section Eight. They should be then paying what her portion would be for Daniel. Got it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Looking at the ledger, Your Honor, as of December 31st, I'm trying to do a little backward on this one. There's the court costs, which we can, or I'll, and we take out the late fees. There's a water bill, but as of December 1st, after the deposit. December 1st or January 1st? Well, I'm, as, wait, let, let's go with trying to get through where the rent that was due for January, for November and December. You said 1500 but it's more likely to be closer to 2100 To 2100 Yeah. But we'll provide you a copy of the ledger again, and you will be able to see this. Okay. Well, they only paid $704 for in December. They paid more in November, but not. Okay, folks. I'm going to just stop you here. Because I thought you guys said you agreed on something, but I'm not hearing really firm numbers of what you've agreed on. Because if brighter way, brighter way, it sounds to me like if they figured it was around fifteen hundred dollars based on the conversation, whatever, and they paid the fifteen hundred, this case still doesn't. And well, there is another piece to it. Um, Ms. Green. Of course there is. <laughs> there's that water program that I've brought up in other cases. Um, once the next water bill hits the account, um, Ms. Green is going to apply to that program to have the water bill paid in full. Got it. So that was what we discussed before we came on the record, all of those, those pieces. Yes, I have got it. And so basically, you have the move out date. You have payment for basically a period from November through February, right? From a couple of different sources, right? Wherever it's coming from, it's going to okay. All right, and the water bill, and the water bills also. That's a third program. Correct, as I understand that, but the water bill. She's going to need to get a water bill <laughs> to get it done. She well, has if the water bill. We could submit the current water bill, but then they will but cover more. They will cover more. So, right. Yeah. That's what I. Right. We, we have agreed that when the next water bill comes, which is probably in a week's time, that we will send okay. it directly to Ms. Bauer so that she can apply. And any money after that bill, residual because she's still on the property, would be deducted from the security deposit. Better. Is that correct? Yes. Did yeah. hang on. Yeah, I we gotta figure that out. I just gave myself a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, go on. Sorry. That covered, I think it yeah, covers that's everything. The entirety of the agreement. That's the entirety of it. I okay, think, yeah. that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, so in terms of how are you gonna who how's this gonna be drawn up? I mean, how are you gonna memorialize this for the court's perspective? Are you gonna prepare an order? I can prepare an order, send it to you before we send it to the court. That sounds good. Okay, so are you gonna do it in the form of a conditional order of dismissal, or are you gonna do it just an order and want me to set another date? I'll do it as an order to set another date because these are all promises that they'll be made. And I'm not willing, my experience with conditional orders is it's a more elaborate process if they're not followed. Back into court. And I've done my best to verify, <laughs> but. Well, no, and I know you have. I think both parties are acting in good faith. It's just an issue of you're also relying upon other people to do things. And some of that can change. Yeah, I think um, if we came back, I would have updates on everything, and we might even either have, um, you know, a, a move out date or a much better idea of when it's going to happen. So, all right, so why don't I do this? You, you said March isn't going to be paid. I've seen paperwork from Mishta slash CMA saying that the the that 
the March payment will, payment will not be made. And, and so I'm assuming that that is correct. That's why we offered for any prorated March rent to come out of the security deposit. Can I ask a question? Why are they saying it won't be paid? I believe it's because there were repairs that need to be made to the property um, and they they weren't made by the deadline or, or something like that. Um, now, here, here is another piece. We did agree that if um, Mishta does pay March, that Ms. Green would be run, refunded any excess prorated rent so that she could pay the balance of the month in her new unit. So Agreed. Probably add whoa, that to the yeah, okay, <laughs> here's going to be the problem. I don't know that you better check whether you can do that. And I only say that because she's not paying it. My so, client would refund directly to her. Correct, but I don't know. Far be it for me to, I mean, I, I get what you're trying to do, but I don't know that he can refund Section 8 monies to the tenant. Gotcha. See, that was my concern is that um, in dealing with other agencies, they won't make a rent payment to two different entities within the same month. They won't prorate themselves. Right. So that was my concern. Right. About having I just don't, I don't want him in trouble because he's gotten the payment. She's not there. He's giving it to her to go to someplace else. And I don't want yeah, her in trouble for that. Cleaner if she pays the mar whatever portion of March out of her security deposit, and we just make sure that the hat payment doesn't pay for March because then it'll be available to her for her for her other unit. Yes. Okay. The the problem, Your Honor, is by the time we've taken everything out of the security deposit, there's no security deposit left for any of the damages. Well, that's what we but that's what we agreed to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I proposed. There's a difference between. Well, see, this is, you, I knew this was going to happen. They stayed up there any longer. It was going to fall apart. I'm not saying who I blame it on. Pardon me. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe. I still have four hundred and fifty dollars in escrow. So was escrow was paid? Oh. Oh, well, I, I wasn't okay. Well then, she paid for you paid four hundred and fifty in okay. Desco. She did her best. Yeah. So there are some funds there. If I'd known that, that's fine. Had you known what? That she paid. We were told that no money had been paid. If she had known that, she would be trying to take it now, <laughs> not giving it to you now. I know you. I've known you way too long. I know it would have happened. So here's what I'm going to do. I have that sitting here so that we don't have to go through this refund thing to any of anything that might look even remotely at either of the, the plaintiff or the defendant in trouble. I've got this here. If we're, there's a shortfall someplace or something doesn't work, We'll use this to try to do that. That sounds good. That sounds great, Your Honor. And so I'll prepare an order with all of the above. Run it by you first before we and make any modifications. And then what would be the next, quote, court date? I would set it for March 5th. Don't want to get too far into March. But by that time, she may know. And she might She'll have had her hawk appointment. So... Well, and she not. might have moved out by then. And she might be out by then. So we'll know at that point. So March 5th, 2024, 9 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yeah. How come, you how, you're welcome. How come we don't bring anything easy? No, I'm just... <laughs> I, would, I would love to get some easy.